Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the SD X Standard 00 Gundam. As always, a big thank you to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for sending me this kit to share with you guys. Uh, it's another very same addition to the SDX standard line, to be honest. It's uh, just, again, more of the same thing. Lots of stickers, and it's got a few hollow parts, most notably just on the back of the legs. But uh, otherwise, very nicely proportioned, nicely detailed uh, kits here. You just have to be willing to put in the time an effort to do all the masking and all the painting that's going to be required on this kit. But again, if you know that going into it, then you should enjoy the kits very nice because I think the hollows on the back of the leg, not really a big deal. The uh, amount of masking that you have to do is really going to be the only thing that would really worry me about painting this kit and there's a reason why I probably may never actually paint an SDX standard kit. Maybe the RX-782 Gundam because uh, I like that one quite a bit and the proportions of that I think look really good and other ones as well but uh, in all honestly in all honesty the double O Gundam is not really particularly my favorite I was very pleasantly surprised with the RG uh, but this SD is not really exactly up my alley so yeah, it's okay and I do have to say this one in the SDX standard line does contain uh, some more heinous stickers than the other ones as you might be able to see here you'll definitely be able to see them more clearly when we take a closer look at the kit so why don't we go ahead and do that now because we'll talk about all of the stickers and the articulation now the articulation is going to be pretty much the same as what you'd expect pretty normal articulation for an SD kit or an SDX standard kit everything is just on ball joints the head's going to be able to go up nice and far before we're pulling that ball joint almost out of the socket and down like that, so really quite nice. So for stickers on the head, we've got the red piece there as a sticker, gold on the V-fins, green here on the side of the head, the eyes, that's a sticker there, these gray silver vents, one, two, three, four, that's stickers there on the face, some silver stickers there on the, each side of the cheek, nothing on the back of the head, nothing really on the back of the kit uh, in general to be honest. And then on the torso, we've got silver sticker there up under the neck. Here on the front, this was three white stickers, one for each little fin part there, and then one white sticker there in the center. On the chest vents, that's one sticker on each side. Up in here, that was one, two, three silver stickers, one, two red stickers there on the side. On this front crotch piece, that's a red sticker there. On the arms, Got uh, one green sticker there on the elbow, and then one green and a blue sticker. That's one sticker that wraps around there. So it's got the green circle, and then the blue part just wraps around like to there. And then on the legs, we've got a green sticker there on the side of the legs for the GN condenser there. And then one big sticker that goes over the top of each foot with silver and white. And then on the GN drives here on the shoulder we've got one white sticker and this is definitely the worst see if you can see that it's one white sticker that wraps around the main cone and then three other smaller white stickers that go around like the kind of base part very very not good I mean stickers are never really great but uh, you know something like eyes and things like that are sometimes passable this one's definitely not any good and then here on the blade part this is also one white sticker so on the underside can see not only are we going to have some serious hollow space there which is not really too surprising but uh, just some kind of flat part on the back of the blade they're not really the most exciting this these are just on ball joints here so those are going to move around a little bit rotate like that these blades do come off of here as well if I can get them off and then there's some different things we can do with those we'll get into that in a moment otherwise the shoulders are going to move freely this is just uh, these GN drives just connected onto the backpack here, same two pegs that uh, most of the backpacks in the line are using. And then at the elbow, we're getting just about 90 degrees bend there on the elbow, so not too bad for that. The hands are just on ball joints. The front skirt is just on there on a ball joint as well, so that's going to move around a little bit. Not that it's really going to make too much of a difference because the legs can't come up high enough for that to really make any difference, but 
legs can come up like so and then down like that before you're popping that poly cap out. The feet are going to be able to go down about that far again before you start popping that poly cap out. So that's a look at uh, how far those feet are going to go down. What that, that is one thing that a lot of the kits in the line have done really well is the feet able to be pointing down pretty nicely. Looks good when the kit is up on an action base. But um, yeah, so that's about it. Again, of course, hollows there on the back of the legs. Uh, otherwise, not really too much in terms of hollows. I mean, there's hollows in here, like on the backpack part, but it's like behind the shoulders. So you're not really gonna see that here on the top of the shoulders too, I guess. It's notable, but overall, uh, that's pretty much it for the articulation. For the weapons for this, aside from the blades there, that are attached onto there, we have two of these GN swords. These would be GN sword uh, twos, so they can be used uh, like this way and used as a sword, or like this way and used as a uh, gun, like a rifle. No stickers or anything for these, they're just going to be all white. Uh, very boring looking without doing any sort of painting or detailing or anything at all on them. So they are uh, mirrored, they're not exactly the same left and right. So you do kind of have these to assign to places. They're supposed to fit with these two connection pieces like that uh, on the inside. So like this one would be for this hand. But of course you can do it however you want. That's just going to fit in the hand like that. Or if you want it to, as a sword, you would use the other one. You have to switch them, but again, you can do whatever you want really to use it like so. Now if you wanted to attach these GN shields, I guess they're called, I think I called them something else incorrectly before. These are meant to attach onto here, but that's for the Frankenstein weapons. So let's go ahead and show you that. What we're gonna do is take our GN swords and then just attach these onto the side, pointed back like so, and then put these into the hands the opposite way. So it's like this, so that connection's facing out. And let's see how well it's really able to hold this. I'm worried how much those GN shields are going to be in the way of the handle. But uh, can do something like this. Excuse me, as it's kind of falling apart a little bit. But there we go. As you can see, uh, with the GN shields attached to the GN swords, it kind of it, it's a pretty cool effect. Uh, it's not bad. So that's one thing that you can do with this. The other thing is to take off the backpack and turn the GN drives around like so, attach the GN shields onto here again like this, and then we're going to put the rifles one on top and one underneath like that, which is honestly going to look pretty goofy, but then that's going to make this sort of contraption thing, which looks like some sort of big claw kind of basically and it says to hold it uh, like that so I don't know if that's supposed to be like a big claw thing or a gun or just like some mega four bladed sword kind of thing uh, but that's pretty ridiculous I think if you took off the hand or if you like put this into the hand first, let's see. Yeah, there we go. If you put that through the hand first and then plug it into the backpack, you can hold it this way. Uh, I think it's kind of a little bit better, uh, but still that's pretty weird. So let's just move on. Now, as I said, uh, the backpack connection is the same as most of the other kits in the line. So if you did want to do something like this, changing out the backpack and giving it the Strike Freedom backpack or a series of other backpacks, you can do that. So if you wanted to do something a little bit more custom, these kits are pretty cheap. So if you wanted to buy a couple of them and only really mix and match, not even use the whole kits, do something like this. Uh, it's really not too much of a waste. So if you're a fan of the Double O Gundam, I'd have to say it's a pretty nice kit. I mean, it's it like most kits, I'd say it definitely does look better now that it's up on an action base, so that is going to help. I suppose this is not an action base. A lot of people still ask me what this base is that I use for these SD and uh, 144 scale kits. I did a review of this base, but in case you missed it, this is a flying ba flying base uh, flying Base R, I believe it was called, from Kotobukiya. Anyway, it's a Kotobukiya base, so uh, it's very highly recommended if you missed that. But 
the kit, yeah, the kit is nice. I feel like there's kind of a lot more that could have been done too with the double O Gundam because it does have quite a lot of stuff going on with it. But in SD scale, I think this is very fine. I think exactly what you'd expect from an SDX standard kit. And here's another thing that I did forget to mention. Those GN sores are able to connect to the side skirts. The side skirts, uh, again, are not articulated at all, but they do have the holes there. You are, like, you are able to plug in those uh, swords. So I gotta say, I do actually really quite like this pose for this kit. If I were to like really put in the work to paint and finish this kit, I think I would probably lop off the little connections, uh, the two, not really little, the two huge connections on the side of the sword, uh, side of the GN Sword 2 there just to get rid of those and keep these on the side skirt like this and just do this pose, I think just to get rid of those connections so I wouldn't be using them. But and that's just me and just an idea for anyone out there who uh, also might be thinking of getting this kit. I really do quite like this pose for it. So with that, it's going to just about do it for my review of this kit. And I feel like pretty much at, at this point, this is the, what, eighth SDX standard kit review. And I think by this point, if you guys have seen any of the other ones, you should have a pretty good idea about what to expect from these reviews. So I hope you don't mind. I'm kind of just like going through them a little bit more quickly. Probably a lot of you are very happy that this review is a little bit shorter than usual. Probably I'm hitting a lot of the key points uh, and not really spending too much time going into too much detail because of the fact that I've it's pretty much have pretty much the exact same opinion and things to say about all of them so far. I mean, there's pluses and minuses for them. So again, as I always say for these reviews uh, of this series, if you know what you're getting into, then you'll like the kit just fine. If you aren't really into the look of this and you are really turned off by the amount of stickers, if that really bothers you, then just uh, don't get the kit. I'm sure there's other other versions of the Double O Gundam that are going to be much more suited to you. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, as always, leave those down below. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.